What's going on everybody, this is Delmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to continue working on netcode for game objects. Specifically I'm going to introduce you to the network animator component that is going to allow us to synchronize animations over the network. I'm also going to be doing a new version of that player controller by changing some of the implementation that we did before and making a good change that is going to utilize the character controller. I'm also going to go over network variable permissions again because I got some clarifications from Unity and I want to make sure that you know the proper information and the correct information when you're implementing networking with these components. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right guys, so what I'm going to show you today is how we synchronize animation. So right here I have basically the server running and also one client. And if I walk around, you're going to see that it's doing the walk animation. If I sit still, it's a little hard to see, but basically it is playing the idle animation. This is another client that also is synchronizing. So as I move the character there, you're gonna see that it's moved also on the right window and everything gets synchronized correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of these and then start working on a couple of changes that we need to do to the player armature. So let's go ahead and go into it. And if you remember what we did previously, we apply a network object, the network transform, also the player hot and also the player control, which we're gonna be changing in this video. Let's go ahead and hit add. And if you do that, you're gonna be able to add a network animator. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and move that maybe right above the network transform just to have them organized. And I'm also going to be creating a new animator. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new folder. And this one is gonna be called, let's call it animations. Very simple, there's really not gonna be a lot of different animations. I'll do an animation controller. We can just say simple animation. And then once you do that, you're gonna be saving it. We can double click on it. And what I'll do is I'll put perhaps this one right here. Let me put it right here. Okay, and then what I'll do is there are a couple animations in the started asset. So if I go into that, their personal controller, character animations, you're gonna see that we have a lot of different ones in here that we can we can use. In fact, I'm actually gonna move this because I think this is going to be easier to see because I'm sitting right on the bottom right. And let me just go ahead and do that. We can just pan and put that there. Okay, so we're gonna have basically nothing in here. It's just gonna be any state and also entry. I can add a new parameter and this one we're just gonna call it walk. And I'm gonna go ahead and just set it to, we're gonna set it to zero just for now. And then what I'll do, there's a couple animations in here that I'm gonna wanna use. I'm gonna have a walk animation, and I'm also going to be adding the add animation, which is going to be actually the default. So we'll just go ahead and right click on that and make that one the default. I'm also going to go ahead and do a duplication on the walk because I'm gonna actually do reverse walk just to be, just, just so that we have something different to do. I'll just do, do reverse walk in here. And then let's make sure that that one got renamed, let me see, reverse, walk, and then this one is just going to be walk, we can just rename it so we don't have that weird naming convention. And I'll just go ahead and move these ones over here. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna start in the idle, right? And as soon as we start incrementing the walk speed, we're gonna go to a walk, and then from a walk we're gonna go, I mean, we could do a reverse walk if we go and hit uh, the S key or the down arrow. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and basically connect all of these ones. I'll do connect this one as well. Connect this one. And then we can go from idle to reverse walk. So all of these states are going to be valid. Once we have all those, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding conditions. So we're gonna go back to idle and then make sure that you basically remove the has exit state on every exit time on every single one of these because we don't want to, we don't want to set a time for the animation. I want them to, and right away. So I'll do that and then I'll also do that on this one. Okay, so now if we're going to walk, the way that it's gonna work is we're gonna set this to, we can just set it, it's gonna be greater than zero, so that means that we're walking. And then what I'll do here, if I wanna go back, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, if it's less than, and this is gonna be less than one, anything less than one, we're gonna go to idle. So the part that is going to allow us to reverse walk is gonna be basically going to a negative number. So I'm just gonna do if the walk is less than, actually less than zero, then we know that we're gonna go back to, you know, reverse. And if we go forward, then that means it's gonna be basically greater than zero. So that means we're gonna go 
to a one. The same thing in here is going to be greater than zero. And then this one is going to be less than one, which means that it's going to be zero. And then if we're going to go basically reverse walk right away, we can say that it's going to be less than zero. And then we can also get back to idle if we want to set it less than, basically less than one. So very simple animation system so that we can change and we can test this right now. So if I were to hit and go back in here and what I'll do is I'll grab or player, we can just say, I think I can go ahead and test it without having these. So what I'll do, let me go ahead and hit play and that way we can instantiate the, the network player armature right away. We can do host and then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and go back in here. Let me go ahead and go back and then Right now, it's not playing, yeah, and it's not playing anything because we haven't really added the animation controller. So that's actually good that we made a mistake. And by we, I mean myself. <laughs> so, okay. And then this is going to tell you, okay, what, what animations does this has and everything is going, is going to, is going to work. So by default, it's going to add this one in, and this has multiple ones. I want to change this to be basically the simple animation. Again, I want to keep this as simple as we can. And then I'm also going to make a change to the network transform because I don't want to change, I don't want to send scaling information back if we don't need to, if we don't want to have the server basically syncing that information, we don't need it in this case. So I'm just going to keep it, keep it simple. So we can go back here and then hit play, make sure that we don't get an error. And if we get an error, it's okay because we'll go ahead and We'll go ahead and fix it, click on start host. And you can kind of see that it's doing the animation we can get here into the scene view and see that the character is currently breathing. I, I really like that animation. So we can make this a little bit bigger here. So let's say that we wanted to go to a one. So if we go to a one, we're going to start walking, right? And, and that's basically what we want. If we wanted to stop, basically idle animation that is playing. And if you select uh, the clone, you're going to see which animation is actually playing. But if I do negative one, we're doing a reverse walking, which kind of looks really strange. It's because we don't have the ranges, correct? So let's go ahead and hit play to stop it. What we need to do here is I need to add another condition because I want to make sure that I am, you know, between one and negative one, which means that it's zero so that we can go back to idle. Let's hit play and make sure that that works. Let me go ahead and focus on this guy. So you can now see that it is doing a new animation, but the animation here that I want is a negative one so that we can go back in reverse. You can see that how we can reverse that. So let's go ahead and test it out. So if I go to zero, we're going to be idle. If I go to one, we're going to start walking. If I go to negative one, we're going to basically walk backward. And if I go back to zero again, we're just going to get back into idle. So we know our animations are working. Let me make sure that everything here looks good. And I think it does. So I think we're good with the animator. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right here and then get back to where we were. So if we take a look at the prefab right now, just to kind of give you an overview, we have our character controller, we have a network object, which we're gonna need. We also have the network animator, which is a new component with the player armature, which basically links back to this animator, and this animator has the animator controller that we just created. I also removed the scaling because we don't need to synchronize that information. And then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and make a couple of changes to the player control that we currently have. So when I cover some of these on the previous video, so if you didn't watch that video, make sure you watch it because it's going to, it's going to make more sense. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and rename this and then I'm going to call it speed. I'm also going to go ahead and do a new variable. This one is going to be rotation speed. And by default, I think we can do something like 1.5 is a good number. And I'm also going to introduce a new enum. I'm just going to do public enum. And this is going to be for the player state. So basically going to have walk state. And then we're also going to have an idle state. And then obviously the one that looked weird at the beginning, but this is the one that we're going to, we're going to start, you know, implementing is the reverse walk. So we can do something different. And then I'm also going to rename this. I was about to cough. So sorry about that. Default initial plane position. This is so that it makes more sense. And what I'm going to do here, we have a couple of variables that we, network variables that we were using on the previous. I'm just going to go ahead and leave those there for now, but we're going to be removing them. So what we'll do here is I'm just going to do a network variable, but in this case, I'm going to do a vector tree. 
And this vector three is going to be for the, the basically the direction of the character controller. So I'm going to do network position direction equal new of the same thing. Couple of things that I want to mention in this video, just as a correction of the previous one. Remember that I said that you could have a network variable that is basically writable from a client or readable? Well, that's actually not true. You can either have a variable that is readable by the clients, or you can have one that is only readable and writable by the server. So the server can write and read, but you can basically restrict who can actually read from that variable. If you didn't want the other clients to be able to read from this one, all you really have to do is do something like this. I can say permission owner only, which means that only the server can basically read that, that variable. And if you want everyone, you can do just everyone. In my case, I'm just gonna just set it by default, which is everyone, everyone can read it, every client can read it, but only the server can write to it. Okay, and then the next one that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say network rotation. It's gonna be to control the rotation, and then we can just go ahead and remove some of these. And then the next thing that I'll do is I want to also store the player state so that we know which animation to play. So I'm gonna do, I can do just copy that, create a new serializable field, and then in this case, I'm just gonna make it the player state, which is the enum that I just declared. And then we can say network player, player state equal new network player state. Okay, awesome. So what else do we need to do here? So these were floats. So I'm gonna change into be vector three, and then this is gonna be vector three. And I'm also gonna re rename it. This is gonna be all input position. And then I'll do the same thing here, all input rotation, because we're gonna be getting that information from or input controls. So I think I got everything that I wanted to, I wanted to change. Okay, perfect. So the next thing that I also wanna change here is I'm gonna introduce a new method, which we're gonna be basically uh, in, uh, intersecting the awake method. Okay, so I'm just gonna do character controller, and we haven't created a variable for that yet, so I'll just do that here, private character controller, and then character controller, and then we'll just do character controller equal get component, because remember the, the component that we're currently using has a character controller in it, and it's gonna make it a lot easier to basically to manipulate the, the rotation and also move the character. And I also need to do one more in here. This one's going, one going to be for the animator because we need to change the state of the animator. So I just do animator there and then animator equal get component the animator, which this component also has. This is fine. I don't think I need to change anything in here other than I only want the current line to be able to randomize. And then I also need to own this object. So basically if I am the one, you know, I'm, I'm the client and I am the owner, I'm going to be randomizing the position of the actual robot. Otherwise I just want to read the information that comes from the network transform that the server is designating for the client. Okay, so I think everything in here looks fine. I am going to change this. It's gonna be actually, I'm gonna do client input. And then I'm gonna change, actually, let's go ahead and remove all this. I'm just gonna, I'll do it from scratch. So what we'll do here, so I'm just gonna say, okay, as long as I'm the client and as long as I'm the owner, I'm going to basically be capturing the, the client input. So I'll just do a new method here, which we haven't, looks like we created, but I'll just, I'll just change it because it's gonna change quite a bit now. And then I'll have two methods in here, which we're gonna implement. One is gonna be client move and rotate. I'll just basically leave it commented out. And then the next one is going to be client visuals. Visuals. And this is gonna be so that every client gets the proper move and rotation and also the client visuals, which means, you know, what is the what what is the player state at that point? So we can actually play the animation. And those are gonna be set by using the information that we're storing as network variables. Okay, so I think everything here looks fine. Just gonna go ahead and remove all of these, we don't need any of that. And then we can just remove this. It's gonna change as well, so just bear with, bear with me, this is gonna be cool. And then we'll just do, it's gonna be client visuals. I'll just create another one in here, which is gonna be client move and rotate. Okay, so far so good. On the client input, we're gonna be changing the way that we move the, the actual client. 
So that's gonna be cool because it's, it's actually gonna feel more natural when you're moving it. So I'm just gonna do a vector three and then it's gonna be the input rotation so that we know how we can rotate our character. It's gonna do, it's gonna be input and then get access and then horizontal access and make, make sure that I do that right. And then I'll just do comma zero. So this is gonna be just the Y rotation that we're going to be getting from the horizontal axis. And then for the forward direction, we're gonna do a couple of things. We're gonna do get the direction. And this is gonna be, we're gonna get this direction of the player by just doing transform direction. And then we just do the vector three forward. So that's gonna let us know, okay, what is the vector for the direction of the, that the player is actually looking at? And then what I'll do here, I'll just do a flow. This is gonna be the forward input. I'll just get that from the get axis. And it's gonna be the vertical, vertical axis. So that should give us, you know, if we're basically hitting up or down, or if we're doing W or S, are we going forward? Are we going backward? And then what I'll do, I'll do another vector three here. That's gonna be the input position. And then I'll grab the direction and I'll multiply that by the forward the forward input. Okay, so now that we have the input position, basically are we going forward or backwards? And then we also have the rotation. We need to make sure that we can track that and send that to the server. So we're gonna do also a couple of things in here. Just gonna make sure that I only do this if there's any changes. So if the all does not equal to the input position or the all, we also want to do that on the rotation. And the all input rotation does not equal to that new input rotation, then we know that there was a change, right? So we want to send that to the to the server, but I also want to make sure that we don't do that every time. So I'm just going to do all input rotation equal all input rotation, all input position equal to all input position. Okay, so, and then the last thing is I need to send that to basically the server. So let's go ahead and rename this. It's going to be update client position and rotation. And then make, make sure that you have the suffix, which is server RPC. Otherwise, if you don't do that, it's going to, it's going to obviously complain. And then this is going to be the new position that we're going to set for the, for the player. We can just say, basically it's going to be, you know, how far we're going forward, how, how much are we going backward? And then I also need to know that new rotation. We can call this new position direction and then new rotation direction. I think that makes more sense to me in my head. And then what I'll do is if you remember, we have these position, these network variables in here. What I'll do is I'll just say, okay, for the actual network position, I'm gonna set it to the new position direction. And then I'll do the same thing for the other one. I'll just go ahead and rename it. And then this one I believe is new rotation direction and everything there looks fine. We need to also make sure that we call it and then make sure that you do the new one here, not the old one, old one, because that's really not going to help. It's going to keep executing that every single time. And then I'll just go ahead and copy and paste this method here. We have to send the new position directions. So make sure that I do that, which is going to be the new position. And then I'll also do that with the rotation in here. I think if I name these ones, rename them a little bit different, they will make more sense, but I think that's fine for now. And then there's going to be a couple more things in here that I want to, that I want to do. So we know the forward input. So if I go in greater than, greater than zero, then I know that the, I need to change the player state. So what I'll do here is we'll just do another server RPC. This one is going to be basically for the animation state, the player state. So we can call this one update player state player and player. It's really difficult to explain it and type it at the same time, but I'll make my best guys. So we can do, and then this is gonna be the, basically we can say this is the new state. And remember on the very top, we had also the new network player state. So make sure that we set that player state correctly and then new state. Okay, so that, now what we need to do is if the value is greater than zero, remember what we did, it was going to be a walk. So we need to update the player state, but this needs to be server RPC. So I'll just make sure that I name it correctly. And then here I'll just say it's gonna be walking. And then we'll just do another one, very similar. It's gonna be an else 
else if. And in this case, I want to know if we're going to be basically doing a reverse walk. Then I'll just do that. And then lastly, I'll just do an else. Anything different than that, which means that it's going to be zero. Then we're just going to be doing an idle. And that's going to cover everything that we need to do on the client input. So this is basically going to be for our player state changes. And then anything, everything in here, it's going to be for player position and rotation input. Okay, so and I think based on input. Okay, so that's going to wrap that up. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to implement that move and rotate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go back down here to the move and rotate. And this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say network position direction the value, make sure that it's not equal to zero. And if it's not equal to zero, then I'm going to use the character controller. So we have our character controller. We're going to be using our simple move. And I think I did something here now that I'm looking at it. This is actually okay, but we need to make sure that we multiply this by the speed. Otherwise, it's not going to be very fun. And then this one is going to be multiplied by the rotation speed. So we're capturing that information, but we also want to make sure that we keep the speeds that we set up here on the very top as our options. I just noticed that, so let me make sure that that is set. And then if we go back into the character controller, simple move, we're going to now use basically our network position direction and then get our value. And then I'll do the same thing with the rotation. So it's going to be network and then rotation direction that does not equal to zero. If it doesn't equal to zero, then we're basically just going to grab that variable and then just set it here. Make sure that you paste it. And that's going to basically do the climb over rotate. So we're capturing the input and then we're sending that information, reading that information from what the server said. And then once we have that, then we can use the character controller on this object to basically move our character. And then if we go back over here, we can just go ahead and comment, uncomment that out. And then I'll just uncomment the visuals as well because we're going to be implementing that now. Okay, so this one is going to be, it's going to be fairly easy. We can just do network play or stay. And then what I'll do is I'll get the value of that. And then if we're walking, then obviously remember the animator. And then we set basically a flow. And then that flow was a walk property. And then in this case, it's going to be one, right? We're going to be walking. And if we're walking, we're going to set it to one. And then I'll do basically, uh, I got to stop saying the word basically. If I say basically again, make sure that you tell me in the comments. That way I'll remember not to say, <laughs> not to say that. And then reverse is going to be negative one. Anything else is going to be idle, which means that it's going to, oops, let me undo that. That is going to be set to, to zero. So if the player stays is walk, then we're going to set the animator value of walk to one. If it's reverse walk, negative one, and then zero. And I think that's everything that we need to do in here. Let's go ahead and get back into Unity and make sure that I didn't make any mistakes and wait until everything loads. And I'll hit play and make sure that I don't get any errors in here. If I do get errors, then obviously we'll fix it. Let's go ahead and do that. And I think I'm getting, let me see, I can go back. I can't rotate for some reason. And okay, we'll fix that, but that's fine. One thing here, I'm going to set this to zero by default. Okay, so we have the speed correctly. We have the rotation speed here. Everything looks fine. If we go down, I think, okay. Yeah, looks like I just copied that and I didn't change the method here. So we can't really just do a simple move. That's not, that's not really how you rotate the, the, the actual player. So what we'll do here is we'll just do the rotate method. And then what I'll grab is I'm going to grab that value. And that's because, you know, obviously it's, it, was go, it wasn't going to rotate when we're calling the, basically the wrong meta. And then what we can do is we can go back into Unity, make sure that everything works now. So we'll wait until everything compiles. And then if this works, we'll also test it to make sure that we have multiple instances running and, and you know, we have the multiplayer implementation working. And you can see that everything, everything works now. Obviously I can rotate uh, with the simple move because that's obviously just for moving and not for rotation. So if I were to increment here, 
the actual speed, we can do something like 10. Uh, and then we can rotate the character like crazy. Anyways, I just wanted to make that fun. But we can go back here to maybe 1.5. And you can see, like, if I select these, the player armature network, you can see how everything is changing in real time. If I go back, we can go back, I can go forward. So, so we know that that part is working. Let's test the multiplayer functionality, make sure that that works. I'm gonna build it and then build it to my build folder. And then I'll show you as soon as it's done building. All right, so I got this build and I have multiple sessions in here open. I'm gonna do the host here. I'll do a client, we'll do another client, and then lastly, one more client. So if I move the character, you're gonna see that the character is moving. And then let's see, I can move the character. And then animations are playing correctly. And we can do the same thing with this guy. I can move that. We can move this guy. So we can go back in here. And then everything is working. So I'm gonna call it good. I think that was a good, you know, 35, 37 minutes of the video. It could be probably shorter by the time that I finish editing. But if you guys have any questions, about what I just showed you today, please let me know in the comments. And if you wanna see more videos about using Nate code for game objects, please let me know in the comments. Thank you very much, guys.